Turn to Mark chapter 12. Thank you, Brother Don. Welcome home. <laughs> verse number 28 is where I'm going to start. Mark chapter 12, verse number 28.
why is it you dislike yourself most of the time? We may get different answers, but they all come down to the same thing. The reason we don't like ourselves is because of what we keep telling ourselves in our mind. We keep defeating ourselves before we can ever get started. We keep defeating ourselves in our mind before we can even see what God has in store for us. We keep defeating ourselves in our heart and in our thought process before God is able to fully do the work that He has prepared for you and I. And we defeat ourselves in our mind. The first thing that we begin to say to ourselves is that we are useless. How many has ever felt useless? How many has ever felt like giving up because you try and you fail? You try and you fail and you get up and you fall down. And you try again and you can't make it. You try again and, and then you get distracted. And the next thing you know you fail. And you feel useless. So because you feel useless, you feel like just throwing in the towel. Can I tell you that Moses felt that same way? Moses in Exodus chapter 4. Verse number 10. The Lord was speaking to Moses. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. I am slow of speech, and I am slow of tongue. I don't have the skills that God, I feel you need for somebody to do this job. I don't have the necessary tools, God, that I feel somebody of that stature, somebody of that prominence should have in order to fulfill the function that you have placed in my life. I'm not, I'm useless, God. I, you can't use me. I can't be used in the capacity that you're calling me to because I am slow of speech, because, you know, my tongue, it just, I get tongue-tied, I get twisted, and I'm shy, and I'm backwards, and I don't speak well in front of other people. I'm useless. That's what Moses felt. Moses saw only the negative. Some people are very good at this. Some people, including, again, I preach to myself, so let me just talk to myself this morning. Some people are very good at this. Some people look at the negative. Some people internalize and say, I can't do that. And you talk yourself out of the blessing before God is even able to fully develop you and make you. You don't have any idea what God's wanting to do with you, through you, and for you because you're talking yourself out of it in your mind because you feel like you are useless. Amen. That's true. Some people have a, a, a dirty window syndrome. Have you ever looked through a dirty window outside or maybe inside through the, through the car? Maybe your window's dirty in your car. You look outside. Everything outside looks dirty. And it's really, it's not. It's the dirty window syndrome. The window itself is dirty, but outside is, is perfect. Outside is just fine. Outside, the weather and the temperature is just how God designed it. But because we're looking through this dirty window, amen, now we look through a glass darkly. Right. Amen. We think that we know a lot. We think that we understand a lot. But as Pastor preached just a couple Thursdays ago, his ways are so much infinitely high above our ways, I'm never going to know the plans or the thoughts that God has for me. But I know that he is on my side. And I know that he does not consider me useless. And I know that he does not consider you useless today. So often we love unnecessary guilt on ourselves. I'm such a useless Christian. I'm such a useless individual. I'm not a good husband. I'm not a good father. I'm not a good son. I'm not a good employee. I'm not a good sheep. And so we begin to love this unnecessary guilt on ourselves. What does God speak about this? God says, there is now, therefore, no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. That's what Jesus says about it. God says, you are not useless because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. That's what we need to focus on today. No, I'm not useless and I'm not going to listen to that lie that comes and tries to dwell on me. And it tries to rest upon me. It tries to sit there and fall me down from doing what God wants me to do. Number two, 
others is to be simply what they want me to be. Saturday night. And yes, I might be speaking a little hard, and you're probably glad that you're. 
that I'm one of my children. But see, you're not the one guarding my child. I'm the one guarding my child. So what you may think is ridiculous and you think maybe may is what's unnecessary. That's what I want to do to make sure that my children have a good vantage point and make sure that they don't get these lies filtered into them. Amen. Amen. I don't want my child to ever feel like he's useless. Nor do I ever want my child to ever feel like he has to do what other people do to make him fit in to be their friend. Amen. You need to do what God wants you to do. Yeah. You need to listen to your pastor. You need to come to this altar of repentance. And you need to follow what God wants you to follow. You don't need to just go with this wind and that wind in this direction and that direction. You need to follow Christ. To fear God is the beginning of wisdom. Another thing that we begin to tell ourselves in our mind is that we are unimportant. We are unimportant. It's ironic but true that people who have low self-esteem sometimes are very self-centered. The reason that they're self-centered is because they have low self-esteem. So it's like a vicious cycle. I'm self-centered because I have low self-esteem, and I have low self-esteem because I'm self-centered. I mean, know what I'm talking about. They're always thinking about themselves and their problems. This self-centeredness is a surefire formula for depression. Man, God did not call us into the house of God to be depressed. God did not call us into the house of God to be all sad and down in the dumps every time we come into the house of God. I need to uplift you and you need to uplift me. Yes, amen. amen. But we can't do that if we're always on our last leg, if we're always woe is me, if we're always poor, pitiful me. We can't ever help one another if I'm always sad about my situation and nobody has it as bad as me and nobody's got it worse than I do. I have one family member that does not matter. Every time I talk to this person on the phone, every time I talk to this person in, in, in face to face, Oh, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> this person has never, ever, ever had anything good to say about their day. How, how you doing today? Oh, I'm hanging in there. How can you never, ever have a good day? Ever. Right. Yeah. Ever. I'm sure on the wedding day, that individual said, oh, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> Come on, got it. The birth of their children, oh, they're hanging.
Should I or shouldn't I go here? Should I or shouldn't I go there? Should I or shouldn't I drink this? Should I or shouldn't I say this? Should I or shouldn't I? And you begin to lie in your mind. Lie to yourself. Remember the, the scripture setting that I first read was love your neighbors as yourself. We don't love ourselves sometimes. And if we think ourselves that we're unlovable, how is anybody else going to love us? And how are we going to show the love of Christ if we can't even love ourselves? If we haven't convinced ourselves that we are worthy of the cross, how are you and I going to be effective in convincing anybody else that they need what you and I have? If all you and I can ever do is say, well, I guess I'm just hanging in there, hanging in there for Jesus, my friend, tie the knot on the end of it, and I'm slipping off. That's the way it is. And so you don't love yourself because you're unhappy with some of the decisions that you make. You don't love yourself because of the, some of the situations that you find yourself in. And how can we be an example and how can we be effective in this world if we can't love ourselves? Love each other as you love yourself. I need to love myself. And I find that hard sometimes to love myself. True. Give myself a big hug. Young lady was being interviewed for a job. She was asked if she struggled to make decisions. This is what I'm talking about. You can't make decisions. Should I go here? Should I go there? Should I do this? Should I not do this? So this lady was in, a, in an interview, interviewing for a job. She was asked, do you have trouble making decisions? She goes, well, yes. <laughs> she struggles making decisions. Well, yes, yes. Yeah, kind of made it go away. Made it go away. Yes, made it. If you have that mentality, and if you have that expectancy in your life, then you're prone to be a moral pushover. I have to have some absolutes in my life, and I have to have some absolutes in my children's life. Yes. There's some places we just will not go. Yeah, right. I'm preaching this for me, sure. okay? Absolutely. I'm not preaching this for anybody else than me. There's some places I just cannot go. Amen. Because what people wear when I go to them places is not worth putting myself or my children in that situation. I got, again, I got a 12-year-old boy. My 12-year-old boy, believe it or not, is starting to notice the other sex. Why put him in a situation that's going to make him fail? That's good. You're right. Why put him in a situation that's going to give him lustful thoughts? Right. Right. Why put him in a situation that's going to make him think less of women than what God has designed Amen. for men to think with an axe? They are not just sex objects. Yes. They are not just sex toys. Right. They are just not something to be bothered with and played with and run away and discarded in the trash. We need to love Christ and we need to love ourselves and we need to love each other as Christ who loved us. And we're not going to do that if I set my children up and if I set myself up for failure. There's some places I will not go. There's some things I will not do. Because I'm guarding myself and because I'm guarding my children and because I want better for them than what this world has to offer. That's what we need to get in our minds today. So we can't be spiritual pushovers. We can't just be morally pushed over. We have to stand for something. And we have to know what line we are going to stand beside. And know that I am not going to cross this. Because once I cross this, there's no return. And once I cross this, you better believe my kids will probably come running. You know why? Because everybody else has Xbox for Live 360. Everybody else has Facebook. Dad, why don't we have cell phones? You don't need a cell phone. You don't need to be up 3 o'clock in the morning texting your friends. I don't need to have a $500 a month phone bill. Amen. You get a job, you need a cell phone, you're going to get one. There you go. Right now, you're 14, you're 12, you're 10, you don't need a cell phone. But all my other friends have one, while well, your other friends don't live with me. I'm telling you, you're glad you're not my children.
said, I, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord hath said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. I'm not ready to do anything for God. I'm just a child. I'm just, I'm young. And the Lord said, don't say that. See, Jeremiah never dreamed that God would ever use him. This is the result of having a negative self-image, which will prevent you from reaching your full potential in Christ. Amen. We talk ourselves out of it in our mind before God is ever, ever able to fully use what he has set forth to you. We talk ourselves out of our blessing. We talk ourselves out of our calling. We talk ourselves out of our ministry. We talk ourselves out of our standards. We talk ourselves out of our convictions because we want to mold and conform to those things that are about and around us instead of wanting to do what God wants us to do. So here Jeremiah is, and he, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm only a child. I can't do. I feel God says, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. Young is relative. We're all young in this house. We're breathing. We're vibrant. We have life in us. That means we have a work to do. That means we got people that we can reach. That means that there's a lost world that we can be touching. And we can't touch if we can't love ourselves. We all know that we have this enemy, the atmosphere of Satan. And we are in a battle with him. Now how can we defeat the enemy when we are fighting against ourselves and not fighting our enemy? Right, right. Jesus has given us a commandment to love ourselves. Love is not a feeling. It's an act of the will. Loving ourselves is something that you and I must do. If we cannot love ourselves, then we cannot love others. And if we can't love others, then we're never going to reach others. And if we can't reach others, then the church is never going to grow. And it all starts with loving myself. I need to stop telling myself these stories. Stop telling myself these little lies. I need to start telling truth to myself. Start realizing that yes, I may have faults. Yes, I may have failures. Yes, I have shortcomings. But that does not stop God from loving me. That doesn't stop God from covering his blood over me. That doesn't stop God from wanting me to be his child. That doesn't stop God from wanting to use me in his kingdom. We need to get close to Jesus. And if we can get close to Jesus, then that is the easiest way to find and to fall in love with yourself. I'm closing. There was a college student that in his doctoral thesis, he went and spent a year with a group of Navajo Indians on a reservation in the Southwest. As he did his research, he lived with one family. He slept in their hut. He ate their food. He worked with them and generally living the life of the 20th century Indian. A close friendship developed between the student and the grandmother. They spent a great deal of time sharing a friendship that was meaningful to each, yet unexplainable to someone else. In spite of the language difference, they shared the common language of love and understood each other in that capacity. When it was time for him to return to the campus and write his thesis, the tribe held a going away celebration. It was marked by sadness since the young man had become so close to the whole village and all would miss him. As he prepared to get up into the pickup truck and leave, the old grandmother came to tell him goodbye for the last time. With tears streaming down her face, she placed her hands on either side of his face looked him directly in the eyes and said, I like me best when I'm with you. I like me best when I'm with you. And I 
I challenge each and every one of us today. I challenge each one of us today. Take a look at yourself. Take a look at where you are in God. Take a look at your, your, your centeredness, your, your, your being. Take a look at where you are right now. And I can tell you without fail, you are going to like yourself more when you are with God. Amen. When you begin to do things on your own, when you begin to do things outside of the will of God, then you begin to get down on yourself and you begin to get, oh, I just, I don't know why I'm so stupid. I don't know why I do the mistakes I do. I don't know why I say what I say. I don't know why I go where I go. And then you can come into the house of God. And you begin to feel that kind of glory. And you begin to feel the presence of God as it begins to sweep over you. And I can tell you, you will like you most when you're with your Creator. Amen. Amen. Let's all speak. Don't give in to the lies that your mind is trying to give you today. Don't give in to the things that this world is trying to offer you today. Set your standards up. Let your lines be drawn in the sand. And let your poles and your, your, your standards, let it be lifted high. Let it go where every man can see. And that there can be a refuge and a safe house for those that are looking. Amen. You will like yourself best when you're with him. Amen. We have a couple minutes. Let's shake one another's hand. Let's get a drink of water. And most importantly, let's get a tune and get focused for the next message.